Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. This is for new users and pros. I swear it's for pros. This is automatic white balance in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, uh, to the professionals out there, anytime they hear the word auto, they are very skeptical. And you're right most of the time. This is a feature that many people requested when I was out there talking to professionals all the time, they would say, give me a white balance eyedropper in Adobe Premiere Pro, an automatic white balance eyedropper. Oh, really? Well, my skepticism came from years of seeing automatic settings and wondering what was really happening. I want to control that I can see what it's doing. To new users, guess what? Just made your life so much easier. In fact, I have another tutorial on getting white balance with the three-way color corrector. For sure, forget that. This is the new and easy way to do it. So I've got my footage. I'm going to jump into the color workspace. If you don't see color workspace, you don't see the Lumetri color panel, it's time to update. So it's automatically selected that first clip there for me. And you can see that things look awfully green. And you can see in the scopes, the green is definitely more predominant. Over in the uh, basic correction setting, so if you don't have anything open, open up basic correction, you'll see white balance selector. It's an eyedropper and currently it is white. If you click on the eyedropper and move it to something that should be white, click and it's done. Wow, pretty easy. So I want to see what it's doing. I don't want all my controls to remain at zero and some wacky auto thing in the back. Well, it doesn't work that way. Hey, professionals, how would you adjust it? Well, there's a good chance you'd move the temperature in the tint slider. Guess what this just did? It moved the temperature in the tint slider. Look at it here. You can see the temperature has moved to minus 8.1 and the tint has moved to 77.5. If we go back and, and reset these, so I'll just double click on them and we move these around, then you know, it, you'd be doing pretty much the same thing. You're watching the scopes and bringing this over. Well, why go to all that work when all you need to do is click in there and you've got it. One other little tip in here, this is an averaging, so you don't want a, a, a point pixel. This is not a point pixel. Um, it's, a, it's a, an averaged area. If you need a larger average area, hold down the control key, command key on the Mac. Watch what happens. So I'm gonna go back and reset these. Click on my eyedropper and you'll notice the eyedropper is a certain size. Watch what happens when I hold down the control key. I'll let go, hold down, let go. You see it gets larger. That's telling you that the Lumetri color picker, that white balance selector is now sampling a larger area. I believe that's 11 pixels by 11 pixels. So, and sometimes you need that if the area you're clicking uh, has too much contrast in some of the pixels and others. You wanna average out a larger area. So control or command for that one. Now let's go to another example here and look at this big white area here. I wanna to talk to you about where to use white balance and why you would use white balance. Well, for the, for the most part, you would use it to help neutralize all of your clips so they come in neutral. It doesn't mean that you can't now make something warm or cool or as crazy as you want. It just means everything is equal when it comes in. So don't feel that, that you can't add more settings on top of this. You can see that these seagulls here are, it's a very warm color uh, that they are. So I'm gonna grab my white balance selector and grab some of these white feathers. And it's not a drastic change, it's a little change. But on top of that, I could go to my color wheels, for example, and then I could cool this whole thing down or maybe make it more green if I wanted to. So it's two settings happening at once. It's also great to match different cameras. I mean, I'm shooting here, this is the original Blackmagic Cinema camera. I also shoot on my Canon 5D uh, Mark III. If I both put them at the exact same white balance, uh, the Canon 5D is always warmer, always warmer. I don't know why, so I've got to balance those out. So the eyedropper would be good and it wouldn't hurt if you, on, on your slate, you, you could put a chart or a white card, hold up a white card, as long as you know it's, it's close to white, um, you can do that and then you can click on that. If you don't have a white card, 
or a lot of white, you can get away by clicking on something that you think is neutral. So let me, let me click on what I think should be neutral, which is this gray area up here. And you can see those are our settings. Here's before, here's after. You gotta be careful with this because there's no telling if I was, I'm, I, I wasn't there when they shot this rock. Is this rock actually more purpley? Is it more green? Is it more brown? I don't know. Just, I wanna throw that out there that you can click on anything you want. Let's go look at this example here where we're looking at um, obviously a very um, color cast scene on here, but uh, hey, look at this cloud. I'm gonna grab the cloud. And for this, I'm gonna hold the control key and click on that. Now I've neutralized that from that to that. The last one I wanna show you is important when you're picking colors. So this is something I shot in Times Square. And your first thought might be, well, that's a white car, let me pick that. But look, we're in Times Square. That is a highly reflective surface with a heck of a lot of highly reflective light in there. Is the car actually neutral? Well, it's probably changing almost every foot as it drives by and gets reflected on there. There's also specular highlights, which should be white and might be white, but the scene might still be um, a color cast to a certain area. So. I'm looking around in here to try to find something that I know is white. Well, hey, look, there's a, a one-way sign up there in the top, and I could click on that. And now I've neutralized that, and you can see that the car comes with it. I could even take this a step further and... Watch what happens when I click on this backpack. I don't know if that, um, let me reset this again. I don't know if that backpack is pink, probably is. But watch what happens when I click on something that probably isn't white. Notice what happened with the, um, the purse. I'm gonna show you before and after. And there's red over there too. The red, it's pulling it all the way down. Maybe you like that effect but there's no, nothing to tell me that that was really white. So you gotta be careful, try to click on something that you know is white, something identifiable. If you've got a chart or card or something at the beginning, you can click on. Uh, but basically this is a great white balance tool. And because I can instantly see right in the temperature and the tint sliders, I feel confident. It's not doing some weird voodoo in the background that might be harming the image. That's the setting that I would have normally done by moving those, the, those two sliders and looking at the, the scope. So why not make it easy and just click on it? All right, hopefully you found this informative. Uh, if you have, then take a moment and subscribe. If you wanna take your support up a notch, join us over on Patreon for as little as one little dollar a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and I'm here to get your white balance and you looking their best.